It is 12 o'clock in Amsterdam today, and welcome to the first Ledger Lessons uh, webinar. Uh, and today we're going to talk about self-sovereign identities. Self-sovereign identities, a topic that you hear more and more in the market nowadays. But we're going to talk about what is it and what can we do with it. And we're not going to talk about it alone, but we are actually going to talk about it with two of the guests today uh, that are here that we as Ledger Leopard work together with or partner with or work for in order to create solutions for the market. And I'm very happy that they're here today. So uh, welcome, and uh, uh, Jimmy from Tyken and Sebastian from Wordproof. Welcome to our webinar today. Thank, Thank you. you. So uh, before we're going to talk about the content in itself, um, both of you guys are pioneers in the industry, uh, both on blockchain and innovative solutions as a whole. Um, how are things at uh, the various companies? So let, let's start with, with, with the Tycon in this yeah. case. Jimmy, how um, are things at Tycon? Yeah, fantastic. I, I'm uh, really happy to be here for, for multiple reasons. Just the fact that um, it's, it's now 2020. We started on SSI in 2016 and now we're here, you know, doing a webinar. There's so much attention, you know, Odyssey, uh, the, the Odyssey hackathon, they, they have a, um, a track on SSI. So that's, it's fantastic to, to see so much traction for something that we, uh, we fought, we fought for quite a bit. Um, and at Tycon, everything's great. We're actually preparing for a, um, a project in Turkey right now, uh, one in Kenya, uh, the first ones with, uh, UNDP. Uh, and we're very excited for because we did a lot of preparation for that last year in terms of research, boots on the ground. So it's great to actually uh, getting ready to get that going. All right. <coughs> Thank you very much. And we're proof. How are things going? Exciting y week. It was an exciting week. On Monday, I had a pitch in uh, Brussels at the European Commission for their uh, blockchain for social good contest. 23 finalists, WordProof was one of them, and five of them will be rewarded with a 1 million prize to grow the ecosystem, in our case, the WordProof timestamp ecosystem. Uh, in two weeks, I speak in Miami at the leading WordPress conference uh, on, the other count of, uh, on the other side of the ocean. And I couldn't be more exciting than being with Tyken here. Yeah, <laughs> likewise. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, you did identity before it was called SSI, right? It's, uh, yeah, so. It's been uh, a long road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And for us, timestamps, they have value without identity, but when you add identity to it, um, it becomes such a powerful tool. Uh, and that's, that's what we talk about today. All so. right. Well, very cool. So let's talk about identities today and SSI uh, in, in particular. And uh, before we're going to talk about SSI, uh, I'm first going to uh, ask questions to you. And please re be reminded, it is a live webinar. So it means you can ask questions to me or even better to Jimmy or to Sebastian. And we're going to ask questions to you as well. So let's start out with the first question to you actually and it's a poll question um, and I'm gonna start it right now and the question is what is your identity maybe a little bit of a philosophical question but a is your identity your passport your driving license your ID etc B is it your biometric so the natural you or is it C you your reputation of all you have uh, and all you have achieved um, uh, during your lifetime so a your passport, B, your biometrics, and C, uh, your reputation, all you have achieved so far. Um, you can click on the answer below, so please do so, so we can see the answers popping up. Um, let me, uh, well, le le let me uh, ask it to you guys, uh, actually. What, um, uh, so, so if you have any answers, I will publish it later on, but to you guys, what is identity to you? I tend to say it's the most valuable thing you have that you do not own. That's a quote <laughs> from Brandon Bloomer, and um, but it describes what it is. It's it's about you, <laughs> but you cannot control it that easily, so it, it has risk with it. So I, I love that definition the most. <laughs> How about you? Um, I, I, I definitely say it's uh, it's it's all the, the the trust, the relationships, everything you have achieved, everything uh, that you've done, everything that other people uh, say about you, what um, way we're all all the, this this amalgamation of information about yourself and the and the people you interact with in in, in the world. Uh, I'd say that is uh, in short your identity. Yeah, so it is a philosophical topic and it's more than, or uh, uh, well we can agree on one thing for sure, it's definitely not uh, the piece of paper, your passport in itself. Mm -hmm. That's just a proof of 
part of your identity, I must say. And 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 what I really like is uh, what you said. It's everything you don't uh, you don't own yourself as well, because it's also what people around you think of you or can actually verify that you are or are not. So I'm gonna close the poll for now and um, display the results to you guys. Uh, so let's move on then to to what is identity and what is an SSI in more particular. And um, an SSI is actually best described as what we call a, a, a digital vault, although in practice or officially it's not a digital vault as a whole, it's a bit more complicated, but just best visualized, it's a digital vault where you are in charge and this vault actually contains information about you. And that can be traditional information with regards to uh, your identity, but it can be more than this traditional information. So it can be, for example, your age and uh, biometric um, information, etc. But it can also be things that you have achieved in life, or at least uh, what you claim that you have achieved, that you have a certain diploma, or that you uh, performed certain work, or that you have a certain reputation. So it's much broader and much bigger than what a lot of people think about when they talk about identities so far. And actually, uh, you can see SSI as the foundation of a lot of services by and, um, uh, and for the government and businesses, uh, where instead of having uh, a lot of information uh, at various stations um, uh, from uh, where the, these single entities are actually in control of this part of information, it is that it's now human-centric, that you as a person are in control of the entity where all the information is still maybe get, uh, scattered uh, 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 amongst a lot of um, uh, uh, areas, but you are in control how you actually route this information to all the people out there. And that brings me immediately to the different roles there, because yeah, I can say I'm Olivier, but if I claim I'm Olivier, just by claiming it myself, it's not worth that much actually. So you need multiple parties in the whole self-sovereign identity game in order to create a certain value to it. And, and one of them obviously is still, we need, still need uh, various issuers. I can't uh, say, well, I'm gonna write down my own passport. No, I still need a government-like agency or any other agency that can actually create a passport for you. And for example, another agency who can say, all right, I'll create a driver's license for you. But on the other hand, I also need people to verify the fact that something is true, yes or no. Um, I can say um, I have a diploma um, from a university, so a university issued my diploma, but am I a good engineer then? No, that is by verifi uh, verification by others and my reputation being built up, that actually creates additional value to it as a whole. So me as a holder, yes, I am in control of what happens with my identity. So to whom will I share it? Will I share it for a certain extension of time? Or will I retract it? Yes or no. But it's really hard for me to issue my identity and also to verify that what I claim that was issued is true. So we need multiple parties in order to really create value around an identity. And that brings me also to the last part of identity, because so far identity is always, uh, in a lot of people's minds at least, uh, connected one-on-one -on -one to a natural person. So for example, an identity is uh, seen as a me as a person, Olivier has an identity, but actually a lot of other things have identities as well. So it's not only the natural persons who can have an identity, but think about objects that can have an identity. So a building can have an identity, and thus we can create a building passport, creating a solid history uh, a provenance trail of this building in itself. So the object can have an identity, but even going one step further, companies can have an identity as well. And using these identities from a natural person, so your personal identity or an object or a company, we can start using this identity in multiple ways. So one of them is the most straightforward case that we all know is that you identify yourself. I am me, this company is truly this company, and this object truly is this object. 
but it becomes more interesting if we can start using it in a smart way. And actually, um, um, uh, the most interesting use case that we see right there are with relation to, say, a verifiable claim. Me as a person, I claim that I did something. I claim that I achieved something and that it's verified by others as well. And this can lead to another uh, interesting uh, follow-up steps. Like I claim that I performed this work, so then the people um, that see this claim automatically know, yes, it is true and it's a valid claim so we can start paying out immediately without a whole administrative hassle around it. Another thing is on the personal consent or the, the, the identity consent part where I say well now I give the consent that on my behalf other people can see my information or can start sharing information in my behalf and by using a identity or a self-sovereign identity in this part you can start uh, saying hey now somebody can see my information and at a certain point if you don't like that anymore you can actually retract this consent as well so you stay in control of identity as a whole well that was enough talking from my <laughs> side like i said we have two very interesting guests and in order to introduce uh, the next guest um, i'm actually gonna start out with a new poll for you guys out there and that is the following one and that is uh, can you actually lose your identity and it's another philosophical question so um, let's start this poll can you lose your identity yes uh, yes, only in uh, exceptional uh, occasions, or no, it is impossible as you are you. Uh, so let's see um, uh, what you think about it. And, and let me actually refer to, to this, uh, this, this one um, directly to Jimmy. Jimmy, can you lose your identity? Yeah, this <laughs> is, like, like you said, it's, it, it's very uh, philosophical. I, I would argue that you uh, cannot lose your identity because it's very uh, inherent, innate to who you are and, and who you interact with in, in, in the world. Um, but certainly you can lose your proof of existence and um, or, or not have one issued to you in the first place. And this is what... Um, has happened to over 1.2 billion people around the world who do not have a proof of existence and because of that are also entirely socioeconomically excluded um, which means no access to, to the services that, that we can uh, enjoy and becoming at risk of um, slave labor, sexual exploitation these are all very real issues associated with it. So, so actually what you're saying is, is yes you, you can lose your identity but not your real identity as a person but referring to the first poll question actually that we did you can lose your proof of identity yeah, yeah, or maybe you never had a proof of identity but it doesn't mean that you don't have an identity as a person yeah exactly so you're identifying documentation your your proof of existence might never have been issued to you um so, how, so how big is this problem um <laughs> like, like i said it's huge it's uh, 1.2 billion uh, people um and a, a majority um, of whom uh, live in sub-Saharan Africa, um, a, a large share also in, in India. Um, and th this kind of brings me to the, uh, to the use case that I wanted to talk about within SSI, which is uh, certainly closest to my heart because uh, we've been working on this the longest for about two, three years now. Um, and so the, the, the 1.2 billion people who do not have an existence we, we, uh, or a proof of existence, uh, we, we know that we cannot retroactively issue birth certificates uh, or passports as such. Uh, it's incredibly difficult to do. Um, at the same time, um, a lot of these people live in areas which are um, often tormented by um, uh, man-made or, or natural disasters and, and, and require a, a high volume of relief efforts. And of course, um, a humanitarian organization can't um, discriminate on, oh, you do not have a passport or a birth certificate, so I'm not going to help you. That's, that's you know, that's ridiculous. Um, so everyone in that deserves aid. So the, the humanitarian organizations, they go to the ground floor and they identify people with um, local, uh, local partners, local help could be uh, pastors or uh, um, ministers, uh, directors of schools, community leaders. Um, 
after, after this, they, they run these uh, eligibility surveys. So, of course, um, someone who runs multiple businesses and is struck by disaster, uh, you know, they, they're on a different degree of, of need for aid than a, a single mother of two. Uh, so these eligibility surveys are, are ran to see uh, who gets, um, who exactly gets how much. And this is often done um, still or predominantly done on uh, either paper or Excel sheets or a program like Kobo, um, after which food vouchers are given out. And this is all done per separate NGO, per separate program. So all different registrations that have to be done over and over again, even within the same, uh, for, for the same relief effort. Um, and afterwards, the the people who receive these vouchers uh, that they're, they're non-persistent the 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 all the all the information the, the surveys the the ids the vouchers they're all non-persistent to say that after the relief efforts have been concluded there's not much that people can do with the fact that they've been identified by a trusted organization at some point um, and, and this brings me to the impact of self-sovereign identity and, and where yeah, that, we... That, that's what I figured. So, so this is basically where an SSI can really come in and, and, and serve for the better. Yeah, uh, and this is what we, uh, what we loved about this case because it wasn't, um, it wasn't abstract. A lot of what we talked about in 2016, 2017, it, it was very much still abstract because the technology was so young. But this is... Uh, a place where we could immediately at least apply the, the principles and immediately make some form of impact while seeing further down the road uh, how, how large the outside, outsized impact could be that we could make. So, so currently, the, or what we could immediately do is give the, the persons affected um, on, on the ground floor a higher control of um, their private information. Um, this is historically been an issue um, see the Rohingya crisis um, where personal information uh, was easily correlated and resulted in, in massacres which is horrendous um, so this, that was privacy you know was a, had to be a starting point um, this also allowed for a reduced need for uh, duplications of the re these registrations among NGOs. So one NGO has verified someone's or attested to someone's existence and, and registered them. Um, this, this means that the, the next NGO who comes in um, doesn't need to do that process all over again, which is very costly and time consuming, to be frank. Uh, and of course, all of this leads to faster emergency response. Can you um, say something on yeah. how many identities are provided in the last years by... Uh, um, so, so this is with, uh, we, we've done this with uh, humanitarian organizations in, uh, so one in uh, St. Martin, uh, yep. one project in uh, Ukraine. Uh, I, I'm not sure how much I can disclose about it okay. because it's been uh, it hundreds, quite thousands, under the tens of thousands. Um, it, it's been a, lar a large number of families, at least in, in, in Ukraine, uh, yep. and now going to uh, Ethiopia and Malawi and, and Kenya to do this. Also because we wanted to make sure that um, it would work along the, the whole tech penetration, uh, the, the, the whole tech spectrum. Mm -hmm. So you have high tech penetration to medium to low. Yeah. Uh, so high being, you know, over 90% smartphone penetration, uh, medium being um, uh, just uh, feature phones, for instance, in Kenya, yeah. very high feature phone penetration. And then uh, low is being no phones at all. But actually, um, it's, it's quite interesting because uh, we, we, we always um, um, had, had the perception or the idea that we needed states in order to, to, to create an identity. But in this case, it's actually an NGO t who creates for these people who really need it, at least a very tiny form of identity. Exactly. So, so this is where our ultimate vision um, is that by giving these NGOs the, the power to at least, you know, attest to someone's existence and allow people to build this accretive proof of existence. You know, like I said, we can't retroactively issue birth certificates, uh, but we can give people uh, a tool which they can then build up their identity as such. And this has been a focus largely um, uh, from the, the work that we've been doing with the, the 121 consortium. Uh, you can look it up, it's numeric 121.global is the website. It's a consortium set up by uh, the Netherlands Red Cross together with uh, multiple other humanitarian organizations uh, with whom we are um, leading these efforts and of whom Taiken is the uh, preferred identity provider in this and, and we take care of the whole um, identity aspect of, of the solution here, which is in, in this case for cash-based aid. Um, so yeah.
super nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, how does it work? Because I can imagine, hey, I have a, a smartphone with then my identity. Hmm. How does it stick to that person that there's no fraud at the place? Yeah, so um, one important uh, part for us was um, the, the issue around biometrics. Uh, the, there's a lot of talk about use of biometrics in the humanitarian sector. Uh, and we find it uh, largely um, scary to some degree. I, I know that the, there's some parties out there uh, who I have through others heard are, are doing great work. I haven't, I haven't seen it myself, but I know uh, iRespond is doing great, are making great progress on this. They're making uh, biometrics uh, entirely privacy compliant. Yeah. Um, but for us, it's been something that we have wanted to stay away from until we were ab we've been absolutely sure um, that it is entirely privacy compliant. Yeah. Um, so for now, we have digitized the, the, the current process, which is um, uh, the, the, the fraud prevention is more on a uh, local uh, human level. So that's why they work with these local partners yeah. who can then uh, you know, attest to the um, validity of, of uh, someone, someone's claims. So, yeah. so basically, by, by truly face value, they can still say at a, at a local level, yes, this person stood next to me and now they have this SSI. And this SSI can be used later on. So at least in the next step, they don't have to go through this face value anymore. Yeah, yeah, so the, the exactly. So if um, if I would uh, go to my local church, which is where the, the people are being identified for uh, for food vouchers, and I take uh, your kids with me, mm -hmm. um, then um, the, the pastor would say, hmm, uh, those are not your kids. Of yep. course, this is an imperfect uh, process mm -hmm. uh, still, because of course um, there could be collusion between me and the and the pastor or the, or the priest which which still certainly happened uh, but for us to start immediately it wasn't our it was never our intention to make a, a perfect uh, solution more so a um, a, a solution that would optimize the, the current process and would lay for us a foundation of where we ultimately want to go so so um, uh, you, you've been working on it in, in, in various projects what are the reactions in the field so far so um, so th there's been a lot of uh, learnings uh, from the field for sure. Um, there were some quite uh, touching moments. So uh, uh, especially within the first uh, pilots, and there was one um, elderly uh, lady who, who said, um, I, I sure hope that I can see this fully implemented um, <laughs> while I'm still around. Uh, and that that's very touching. Uh, we we saw that um, actually a lot of people because we uh, initially thought that maybe there would be a, a big barrier because of the um, digitization of, of the current processes. Um, we actually saw that a, a lot of people started banding together and and asking each other for help, and and it actually went rather more smoothly than we predicted, especially for what at the time was a, a first iteration with a lot of untested assumptions. And so, of course, we've been iterating on that um, ever since. Uh, but there have been a lot of learnings on um, the challenges you start to face while when you get to the ground floor. Um, and uh, that there's, there's a, a reality in, in place of certain stakeholders, certain geographical distances that, that need to be uh, surmounted. Um, so that there's been a lot of uh, challenges along the way, which highlights the importance again of having to go to the ground floor, speaking with the people, having boots on the ground, um, and, and really understanding the, the, the roots of, of the problem. Actually, w w what I, I, I find quite interesting is, is um, now we actually uh, replacing the traditional state as the first issuer in these case because the state for some reason isn't there at, at that point in time. Mm. Uh, so we go to NGOs, maybe to churches, etc. But then these people go back into the process um, uh, of, of trying to get a, a identity from a certain state and, and how do they or is there any experience yet how do they react to this kind of SSIs already so that you come at least with a a bit further verified identity than 
you did before. Yeah, yeah. So of, of course we um, we we cannot do anything in any given country without first going through the government at, at, at to some degree and having some degree of interactions with uh, with the government. Mm -hmm. uh, for one instance, um, in in Turkey, it was actually from the the Ministry of Foreign Affairs themselves who were interested in in implementing these these principles for the refugees in Turkey. Uh, the Syrian refugees in, in that of which uh, of, of whom there are many uh, three million um, and th there certainly is a large interest we actually found out that the uh, Turkish equivalent of uh, TNO is called Tubitak they were actually already working on, uh, on on sovereign and they were testing wallets you know crazy because we we were kind of you know talking on a high level explaining these these principles to the government Uh, and then someone's ears peaked up and I'm like, hey, isn't this SSI? Isn't this what Sovereign does? And I was like, hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and we've been working on that Sovereign. Sure, sure speeds up the discussion. That, yeah, that's absolutely. For sure. <laughs> so that, that, that made us uh, very excited and, and that certainly did um, uh, expedite the whole process there of, yeah. of being able to get started. So, so but that, that's a nice example where all of a sudden the people in the field understand what you're doing. But I can also imagine that a lot of people find it scary. Um, absolutely. Uh, so there's um, th there's been some cases of uh, you know going to for the first interactions in a certain country, and then everyone uh, loving the idea, and then asking, "Where's the red button? Where's where's where is the back door?" Mm -hmm. um, and, and that, of course, is a uh, is, is dangerous in in its own regard. Of course, um, I don't know if you've uh read the the washington post but but two days ago you know uh, came out that the cia didn't e didn't just have backdoors on uh most of the encryption used by governments they, they had a monopoly on it you know they actually <laughs> owned the company that made it so so it's 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 not uncommon and of course we live in a, in a world of backdoors uh but this is also where we have to be cognizant of the fact that ssi immediately implementing ssi 100 of what we want to see it is also Uh, from a, a policy and a legal governance point of view, it's it's very hard, but we should be taking the steps um, to 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 get there. So you know, SSI is is Disneyland, and you want to get all the kids in the car to go to Disneyland, uh, but you're gonna make some some stops along along the way. And if you don't tell them you're going to Disneyland, they probably won't get in the car. So you do tell them, but you're gonna first hit your favorite roadside restaurant. Yeah, and, that, and that's self-managed identities. You know, at least giving people the the ability to uh, delete their data, even if it's on the server of a uh, governmental institution. So then, you know, you kind of meet in the middle while you can still uh, provide most of the benefits of SSI and laying down the infrastructure, mm -hmm. showing them how it works, getting increase and increasing trust in in, in the system, mm -hmm. and then ultimately step by step moving towards that that full SSI picture that we want to get to. And uh, uh, taking the, the Tycon solution uh, back to the, 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 the three usages that I uh, explained, uh, the, the identifiable part, mm. uh, the, the, the claim part and the consent part, I would say that you guys, but correct me if I'm wrong, are uh, very much on the um, uh, identity side, so proving who you are, the sort of personal identity side, but also the personal claim that based on that you can claim certain things as well. So more than just identifying who you are, but also what you can do or what you did. Yeah, yeah. so so to a degree we've had to, uh, especially for these, uh, for the humanitarian aid use case, we've had to be kind of in all three, because also on the consent side, of course, we want to be able to give people more control and consent over what, what happens with their data. Um, but uh, for sure, yes, on, on the uh, identification side, which happens more on a, on a, a human basis, um, which uh, luckily in the Netherlands or, or in the um, in, in the West here, uh, we can use uh, Onfido for that, which is magic. You know, you've uh, I don't know if anyone uses Bunk, but you take a picture of your your passport and then you're onboarded. Everything is done automatically on the back end, and we can actually use those processes to turn these. Um, you know, at the point that this has become verified, your passport, turn it into a verifiable credential uh, and, and make that useful. So, in the, so here it's, it's quite a bit easier than, uh, than there, um, but we still, we're, we're making continuous steps to, to optimize the process in the field yeah. in places where it's um, a lot harder and there's, there's less yeah. tech penetration. Yeah, and, and indeed we have various solutions already. You mentioned mm -hmm. one, but you also have something like Entrust from Canada who's working on these kind of solutions, uh, Clever Base in the Netherlands yeah. working on these kinds of solutions. So yeah, that's made very easy. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really the challenge to implement it in, 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 in countries where they yeah. don't have uh, a 
DigiD uh, or, or any, any kind of sophisticated yeah, matter absolutely. in order to do the identification that part. Um, in the interest of time, um, because I think we can talk <laughs> about <laughs> hours about so, this, this, this use <laughs> case, <laughs> it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, but um, uh, I would like to, to, to move on actually and, yep. and move on to you, Buzz. But in order to do so, I want to challenge the people with the question, basically, um, and that is the following. Blockchain in combination with SSI uh, will solve the fake news and the deep fake problems out there. So not only from a personal consent or a per personal identity uh, uh, use case, what 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 Tycon really is, but can we do other stuff with it? Can we uh, see it lost uh, uh, apart from from from? personal identity in a traditional sense, but can we use it to other means as well? And especially fake news and fighting fake news and deep fakes are coming up as well. Can we use the combination of these kind of solutions in order to do so? So this is another philosophical question, or maybe not so much, um, because it's something we're exploring at the moment. So Bas, I'm going to turn this one to you. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Shall I do a quick introduction of WordProof first? Yeah, sure. So I'd like to say, the internet as we know it has a deep-rooted issue, and it's trust. Ipsos 2019, the research shows us that 29% of the Europeans are suspicious of the internet, and 86% of, uh, of all the people in the world have fallen for fake news at least once. So this causes fewer purchases online, people using fake IDs, and a decreasing trust in the internet. So our mission is to bring a layer of trust over the internet. What I read is real and I can verify who wrote it. What I create is mine and I have to prove. And in disputes, for example, in e-commerce, I have leverage, I'm protected. Um, Timestamping content on the blockchain. So it's kind of a certificate of birth, but then not for uh, people, but for content and publishers. That's what we do, or web shops. And uh, what you see here on the slide is wha what it could look like. So for example, on the left top, you see a blockchain timestamp certificate. Um, one of the interest, oh, can you? Yeah. Uh, oh, keep back, it? sorry. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> uh, what you see on the left, under a piece of content, could be anything, a product in a web shop or an article, you see uh, a, a link. If you click on it, you see, hey, this is, uh, at first you see, hey, it hasn't been changed since the last timestamp. Another important thing from the Ipsos research, 85% of the Europeans support education on fake news. So we thought, okay, what can we do in our timestamp certificate? There's a great explanation. What am I looking at? So that's what you see on the top. And on the bottom, you see uh, a way to check yourself. Um, yeah, what the origin of the content is, it's kind of the certificate of birth. And what you see there is, um, for example, hey, you see red text, green text, red is what disappeared and green is what's been added. So you can see kind of a trail of history of content, which would be hugely beneficial for uh, product information, but also for publishers. On the right, you see some stats on adoption, almost uh, 200,000 timestamps were placed all real content, uh, but the number we put on top was the 35 million because that's the amount of uh, links to timestamp certificates we've served uh, the last eight months. Cool, cool. If you go to the next slide, you see we... Um, yeah, go on. Yeah, <laughs> we, we work, uh, we just have, it's not just tooling because for adoption here, we, we have a totally open source manner, a whole holistic vision on how timestamping should become a standard. That's not by creating our own standard, but by integrating with, uh, with current standards there are already. So search engines, for example, they work with schema.org. Uh, governments um, make, yeah, uh, make it mandatory to use Dublin Core. That's another standard to present information to social media, search engines, uh, because the timestamp certificate is cool, but that's something for people. Um, we make sure that the timestamps will be added to schema.org, for example, so that search engines could interpret what's going on there. Um, a timestamp, just a proof of existence, mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. We did a legal uh, opinion on the how it will hold in court. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, long, st long story short, it will work in court, it will hold up. But when you add self-sovereign identity to it, then you can say- you're really gonna yeah. get an added value. So yeah. number one, without yeah. identity, it's transparency. If yeah. you add identity, it's accountability, and that will lead towards a more trustworthy yeah. internet. Absolutely. So you have identity, that's number one, and then yeah. we have a tier levels. Yeah. So we say, hey, 
no identity is tier level zero. Then we have full-fledged government identity that's uh, tier level six and everything in between. Mm -hmm. And there we come to fake news because with those timestamp ecosystem, we say, hey, Europe now has the tools or the world now has the tools to uh, fight the resistance of fake uh, or uh, tech giants because they say, hey, we don't want timestamping. We don't want identities because there's it's opposed to their business model. For example, John de Mol, the Talpa director, he has a lot of trouble with uh, impersonating. And uh, yeah, it's in yeah. the news all the time. Mm -hmm. um, if you add identity, hey, you have to add identity before advertising will be approved, then mm -hmm. you can totally eliminate the, the deep fakes or the advertising with, fake, uh, with yeah. identity fraud. And, and even if you don't have up f uh, upfront approval, if you see a video of yourself and you add your SSI consent to it, yeah. basically, mm -hmm. so then all of a sudden the video has so much more value because you know that the people in the video yeah. actually gave their consent, yes, this is truly me, instead of a deep fake. And uh, that that's, and I, I think we're quite far ahead in, 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 in the world in our thinking, yeah. because 99.99% don't even know what deep fakes are yeah <laughs> but but <laughs> we know it's gonna be a problem and in, in, in this case we you can actually say all right the uh, by by time stamping yeah. it, um we prove the authenticity of the content yeah and by adding the ssi to it yeah you pr uh, add the consent to it and thus you say this as a total yeah is fighting it right yeah again yeah. can we do yeah. the next slide yeah sure because then um i'll have it here as well <laughs> You have two parts. Number one is identity of persons. Yeah. So what do we say? Hey, there are two use cases of the, the person thing. If you say um, a CEO of a company does mm -hmm. an opinion, publishes something on the website, yeah. then there's a, a marketing department, there's a legal department and a CEO. They all have to timestamp it. So with yeah. multi-signature timestamps, you can kind of connect to the governance in an organization. Mm -hmm. So that's persons uh, connected to it. Yeah. And um, number two, you can have really the identity of content. Mm -hmm. When you make a self-serving identity for content, there are, uh, there's a webinar series, uh, ssimeetup.org by Drummond Reed. He uh, defined the the uh, the IDs and the SSI uh, definition. Yeah, <laughs> great guy, great guy. <laughs> uh, we had the pleasure to uh, have some brainstorming with him. We were really happy that, uh, yeah, you're in touch with him for a long time. Yeah, he was yeah. at their office for like four hours a couple weeks ago. It's it was great. Amazing yeah. guy. And um, what you see is uh, if you can make kind of a SSI for content or a, a decentralized identifier for content. You can make content transferable. You can do licensing in the content. You can do the, s the, the multi-signature. You can connect to the governance uh, <laughs> in that case. So that, that's, that's really interesting to, yeah, that's what we're discovering at the moment. So SSI for content. But going that, that that is truly a new way of thinking. It's a new say. way of because thinking. And this this is re relating to the types of identity. Yeah. We're not talking about a person anymore. It's it's I would say an object identity that where yeah. the content is an object in itself then. Yeah. Right? Then yeah. And, and maybe making the bridge to fake news. Yeah. Because what happens on Twitter uh, two weeks ago, they uh, shut off one side and they say, hey, uh, it's not it's not allowed. We delete it from our platform. That's censorship. Mm -hmm. And um, in my opinion, fake news sh may always be there mm -hmm. because fake news, sometimes it's trolling, trolling is bad, but there must be a place for trolling. But in many cases, fake news is an opinion of a person or opinion of a group of persons. Yeah. With the tier levels, you can say, hey, I take no accountability until I take full accountability. Um, what you should do, f f every fake news or every opinion may be there, but really, the problem is when something goes from an opinion to mainstream. So what we should mm -hmm. avoid at all time is just opinions going mainstream. Yeah, and, and b because it's a fine balance, because uh, y you mentioned yeah. the word already, censorship, we yeah. should always have freedom of speech. And, and what somebody calls fake news can be somebody's honest opinion. In exactly. Case. But in this case, you can always keep them accountable to their opinion, so yeah. they can't say, I've never said that. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, for it, it never yeah. because people can change their opinion, and that's that's okay. Right? Yeah, you you learn stuff, and you you evolve as a person, and also in your opinions. And also, it's yeah. a reputation around that identity. Yeah. But what what uh, the wordproof timestamp ecosystem is a holistic, open vision, yeah. and then you can say, hey, tier level uh, one, two, three, 
mm -hmm. on social media or tier level one and two, it's only for your friends. Yeah. Tier level three, four, it's friends of friends. Yeah. And from tier level five, it can go mainstream. So, so, so mm -hmm. you can post it on any public website if it you want it to. It can spread. Yeah. The yeah. algorithm yeah. is allowed to yeah. uh, bring it to more people than just your friends when it's tier level three or four. Yeah. And still you can say, hey, uh, that person, I really don't like him. So filter that one out for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but even that could be totally in an open source and transparent manner. Yeah, yeah, and you can say yeah, for by example, filtering other persons, that's always no, no. Tricky it's as well. it's on <laughs> a personal base. You yeah, should, yeah. The algorithm shouldn't decide, but um, it should be able to do that yourself. For yeah. example, my grandma, mm -hmm. she's uh, yeah, she's she's uh, how do you say dement dement yeah. dementia? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, for example, but she knows how internet banking works. So what you can say is, hey, uh, only tier level four or above our website she can visit. So in that way, time times can fix in a way the broken web we can make it a trustworthy place for her as well yeah without which, uh, keeping her out yeah well, which of course is, is also a problem with with people uh, you know especially the the elderly they, they might think that everything that is online that they see might be trustworthy they they might not know the difference between the websites that 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 is entirely fake news or exactly. even even satire they might yeah, see the satire, onion yeah. and, and think that it's you know all true it happens and, all the time that of course you know like with uh, election meddling and, and things like that these people are sensitive to to being manipulated by by fake news and you know they're a large voter base so i think yeah. they definitely have a huge impact we think so yeah, yeah. so what, what what would your uh what have your main challenges and like findings been in this because of course it's huge problem that I can imagine that you've overcome quite a yeah. few challenges. W yeah, we started with, uh, for example, people had to use their own blockchain wallet to make the timestamps mm. with Scatter in this case. And we thought, okay, that's the most uh, clean way to do it. But then we find out, oh, it's too complicated for people to work with keys and stuff like mm. that. So uh, we made a kind of a WeStamp for you service. So the big publishers, many of them, use yeah. the WeStamp for you service. Yeah. Which in itself is a consent as well. So you say, you can do it for me. Exactly. Yeah. And we right. and we started with, the, as a company, we're uh, chain agnostic, but yeah. we started with EOSIO. They have yeah. a very advanced uh, permission system. So we can say, the only thing we can do on your behalf is uh, timestamping yeah. um, on this website, for example. Yeah. So we don't have their, uh, their private keys to uh, own their whole accounts. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm re really excited uh, excited about this solution, and, and, and you, you can tell Jimmy yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's also the reason why we, we we partner in this one to see yeah. if we can really build this because one yeah. with, you, with your experience from the 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 the, 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 the timestamping part, yeah. and our experience from the the, the, the blockchain uh, SSI part. Yeah, that that would be a golden combination. Exactly, we think so at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, because yeah. just a timestamp without identity or has a lot of value already. Yeah. For example, to search engines, you can prove that you didn't tamper with it because yeah. you have a certificate of yeah. birth, proof of existence. Yeah. But when you add identity and you as a company, you both are, mm. you are so far in thinking, but also in doing the yeah. Medicare really building use it. case, yeah. go to the website, check the Medicare, uh, I don't get paid for this, but <laughs> <laughs> check out the Medicare use case. It's uh, reducing costs, yeah. just a, a daily operational business case. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 yeah and, and that's, that's always been the great part at Lecture Leopard that we actually build what we talk about. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> really try it. And you said, hey, the pudding is in the eating. Come <laughs> over, come over, come check out what we do. And I thought, okay, okay, just another identity. And then I came with uh, Jeroen, your CTO and you, and I was mind blown. And yeah, <laughs> m big magic will happen there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, so this is a really nice example how we can use uh, SSI, not only from a personal identity part, but yeah. on a whole next level, actually solving what you call the the broken web. It's the broken uh, web. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's yeah. fix the broken web. And we should do it together. Also, yeah. what you do, you started with yeah. identity. Then you saw, hey, Drum and Read, uh, the SSI <laughs> initiative <laughs> is there. Yeah. And we team up. Yeah. It's not a zero-sum yeah, game. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's that's what I always say. This is a positive-sum game. You know, if we work together, we help each other. Because yeah. that, that's, that's been one of the main advantages of the web. Because before, you know, everyone was working in, in parallel, in silos. Yeah. And now we have the opportunity to come together. Like, oh, you already built that? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So I don't have to do it. I can build on that. We stand on each other's shoulders. And you're and a steward since day one. So you walk the talk. <laughs> and that's <laughs> great. That's why I was so uh, honored to be with you in the call. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Yeah, so I, I think this... Uh, this use case like it's it's completely uh, on the one and completely new to me so <laughs> I, I i learned a lot from uh, from this and I'd, I'd never 
Uh, I've never thought about the the combination with SSI in in this way because yeah. of course there's like this kind of oracle problem at the yeah. end. Like who puts who puts it in? <laughs> like yeah, who, who has the accountability? Yeah. Exactly. It's and so I'm very, very glad that I've been in contact for Bus for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that we can cross cross reference our ideas in this case, and and this is where we build. And on we this will. Yeah. Absolutely. And for example, because yeah. uh, that's what you see on the screen as well. Yeah. It's kind of the DID uh, semicolon. Yeah, word proof, or it could be content. We're defining it at the moment. It's not there yet. It will be a chain agnostic standard. Absolutely. Um, and uh, there's a lot going on in the, yeah. the DID world. So that's what we work on. Yeah. So for the interest of time, because also on this topic, we can talk for hours. <laughs> and we only <laughs> have one, um, uh, a few, few more minutes left. Um, um, I want to ask you guys one more question. Um, so far, um, uh, we are working on implementing this stuff. And a lot of people are talking about SSI, but we are really working on it to, to get it out there in the field. Yeah. Um, so what are your biggest lessons learned so far with this regard? So uh, Jimmy, you can kick off on this um, one. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm going to kind of reiterate and build on what I, what I said earlier in the, in the sense that of course, SSI has been uh, an extremely exciting development that, that could cause a, an, an entire paradigm shift for the web, you know, fix the broken web. Um, but at, this, at the same time, because of that, uh, that, you know, kind of, you know, upcoming hype and focus on the infrastructure as well, which of course was extremely necessary, we shouldn't forget about um, uh, the, the principles of product design. You know, you have to go to the field. You have to understand what your users want. You have to understand the constraints, the design constraints, and, and make it usable. And, you know, think about what are, you know, you have the plumbing of the infrastructure. What is the housing on top, the enabled value proposition um, of uh, SSI and, and of these, these nascent uh, technologies? And I think you are a perfect example of this uh, this enabled value proposition. I think that's fantastic. All Thanks. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, two yeah. use cases, which yeah. blockchain is the only way to do it, almost the only way to do what you do. Uh, at, at scale, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and for, uh, for us, that's yeah. that's the same case. Yeah. So your lessons learned then in this the case? The leopard lessons. <laughs> I even <laughs> took yeah. on uh, you, leopard, your leopard shoes. shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Great, great. <laughs> love it. Next time we do an overview shot. <laughs> um, yeah, the thing is, for us, the same. Identity is... We talk about it for more than a year now. <laughs> uh, we're adding it, but um, the value proposition does not rely on identity. Because if you need identity to, in, in the core really for us, the use case, then, then we are two years too early, I mm -hmm. guess. So uh, we made a product that's been wild in the open, 35 million certificate links are served already, um, which doesn't rely on, uh, yeah, on identity yet mm -hmm. um it's being used by by publishers I, it's a real case and i think that time stamping can lead to mass adoption because it's a easy to understand use case it brings a lot of value identity will be added to that and i <laughs> totally yeah. agree with jimmy uh part of our team from day one is is user experience yeah. if you open source is cool but <laughs> people <laughs> won't go because the philosophy yeah. of something is nice they it, it should be really a good yeah. and understandable product yeah. before adoption I, I, arises. I completely agree. We so have some fantastic UX guys better, as well. You can oh compare. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they, they're working yeah. on your yeah. project as well. So it's, uh, and lesson yeah. number, uh, le leopard lesson number three, check the use cases on your website already yeah. because it's, it's really uh, amazing what's yeah. going on there. Yeah, and, and for, for our two cents, it's also, and, and, and uh, you mentioned it partially as well, it's, it goes beyond the technology. You have to really think through uh, in a lot of cases because this is a very tricky part to get right, uh, especially when you use, uh, you, Bas, you said it yourself, blockchain is, in this case, the technology that really helps getting this going. In, in, in another way, it was really yeah. hard to set it up. But blockchain in itself also had, uh, has its downside. Um, especially with regards to privacy issues or p potential privacy issues. So to get the right design going in order to make this um, uh, eligible for everybody to use and also that the legal people like it for, yeah. for people to be used, that was our biggest lessons. How should we design it in such a way that we have agreement that um, uh, we don't are in, in conflict with GDPR and these kind of things. And uh, fortunately, we are, in a, we are in a situation that the legal parties have approved our solution so far. So that is a great that's step. Amazing. And that's a big, big lessons learned from our and side. 
yeah. SSIs for content can be a very safe harbor to start. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, that, that's less sensitive in many cases, not in all cases, yeah. but in many cases, yeah. it's a safe way. Unless we're gonna put the personal consent of to the course, content of course, to of course, it. Of but course, of course, of course. All right, well, that, that brings me to, to the end of today. And I, I must say, I, I do love the energy uh, on the table today. So thank you very much, Likewise. guys, for, for being thank here. Thank you for having us. Um, hopefully, we see, uh, we see you back and you liked it as much as we did. Uh, like you could tell, we can talk about this for hours more. And maybe we will do so. Maybe we will invite you back again in a few months' time that or a year lovely. down the road to see where we stand. Because I think we're doing amazing stuff. So if you liked it as much as we did, please tune in to our next webinar, which will be on uh, March 19th, same time, and uh, for us the same place, and uh, maybe for you as well, but that's the nice thing about webinar. You can be anywhere, anywhere you want to. The invitation will uh, follow soon with the details of what we're gonna discuss there, but promise um, uh, from my side, uh, we'll try to make it as equally interesting as possible. It's going to be hard to top though. <laughs> so thank you very much, guys, for being here. And if you want to have more information about um, uh, our organization, about Tycon and about WordProof, um, here are some details um, uh, where you can actually find us, our websites and our Twitter handles, if you want to follow a lot of the information that is going on. So thank you very much for being here and uh, listening in to this, uh, to this session. And we love to see you back in a few weeks time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.